Welcome to the joy of coding. Hello, and welcome to episode 151 of the joy of coding. My name's Mike Conley. We're going to be hacking on some Firefox stuff today. I'm just getting over a cold, so um, we'll see how this goes. I also had a, a week off. Uh, I was doing some training. I'm back now. I'm not sure if uh, I'll be able to stream next week as well because there are meetings that I, I don't think I can avoid. So I'm going to do my best today. But like I said, I'm recovering from a cold, so it's possible I end a little bit earlier than normal. Uh, just because my throat, my, my voice is still getting used to, to speaking again. All right, let me share my screen. Woo, and let's go to the agenda. Right, episode 151. Reminder, no plan survives breakfast. This cold wasn't planned. This whole stream's not planned. I don't really have, uh, I know what kind of what I want to do, but I don't have like, pre-written solutions on how I'm going to do things. I'm really just sort of hacking as I go. I'm going to be coming up with solutions to problems I hit on the fly. Things might go wrong. I might get derailed. I might get stuck. That's okay. That's all par for the course. So just so you know that that's what, that's what we're getting into here. I want to point out that this agenda is something you have access to. If you're watching this on Air Mozilla, it should be in the handout section over here. If you're watching this on uh, YouTube, check the video description down below. And if you're watching this on Twitch, I will now drop it into the Twitch chat. Boom, there's the agenda. Similarly, there is a link to rate the episode. When you're done watching this episode, let me know what you thought. Um, let me drop that into the Twitch chat now. But yeah, let me know what you thought. I read all the feedback that comes in. I also wanna quickly uh, shout out to the episode guide. There is an episode guide to the joy of coding. It exists and it is entirely viewer maintained. So we have up to episode 150 from last week or the week before rather and you can see all of the uh, you you can see all of there are a bunch of links in here. It's it's not a whole lot of material but it's enough. You know like you get links to the agenda, you get links to the episode, you get links to things that I shouted out or maybe I did, links to the bugs I worked on. Um, source code links, that's nice. Uh, and so, and also a link to, to rating the episode. So uh, that's a thing that you can actually contribute to yourself if you are a viewer, you have your own notes, your own addenda, maybe I got something wrong, maybe you wanna expand on something further, you have some information about, you can contribute to the viewer guide, the episode guide, just send a pull request to the repository. Instructions are here in the agenda. So just check those out uh, and thank you for that. So a quick self-check, is everything working? I am recording, you can hear me, great. I want to give a quick update on the last bug we were working on together, which was stop sending compiles from the remote web progress uh, module. That actually, uh, I was working on that during episode 150, if you recall, I was eating spicy wings and, uh, and just wrecking myself. And uh, if you're curious about that, you should watch episode 150, it was a landmark. I got a lot of, I got a lot of feedback about that episode, and I'm not talking about people feedback. I'm talking about full body feedback. Um, but also, the bug we were working on, it actually got fixed yesterday. The patches finally landed. It took a long time to get all the reviews, and I actually ended up splitting this into a couple of, a couple of bugs. Uh, let's see, where was the other bug? Here, this bug, 1492950, which I'll drop a link to in the agenda as well. So I had to split it up into a couple of bugs. Uh, split off this work. But that landed yesterday and it seems to have stuck. So if you're using Nightly today and up to date Nightly, you've got the changes built into it. Another thing I wanna shout out is that Firefox Color, the thing that is allowing me to create this theme or have this theme, was recently updated. Um, to allow it to color panels as well. Notice my panel is nice and vibrant and blue. Same with the search drop down here, or like the, the URL bar drop down, that's very nice. If you want to uh, get your own browser theme, uh, you should go to color.firefox.com. Make sure you have the test pilot extension enabled in order for this to work. And if you're like me and you were excited to try this out and thought it wasn't working, make sure that your color add-on in your about add-ons page. So if you go to uh, add-ons here, go and find Firefox color 
and make sure it's up to date because you need the most up-to-date extension in order to, to color the panels. So yeah, that's all very fancy uh, and, and I'm happy about the theming. And if you want to, uh, if you want a copy of my theme, uh, here it is. Here it is. It's, this is the up-to-date version of the theme, most recent version of my theme. I'll put a link to that in the agenda. So if you go there, you can apply that theme yourself. You can change it as, as much as you want, uh, make it look how you need. Okay, oh, and you can also like set custom backgrounds. I thought was kind of cool, like I can add a grid. Although I find that the grid makes reading background tabs a little harder, so I'm not gonna do that, even though it is a cool look. So what do I wanna work on today? Well, all of this Kapow stuff, removing the Kapows was actually all, there was a plan, you know, like this was, the reason we wanted to remove them was because it was blocking this bug because it was causing a leak. If you go back to the beginning of episode 150, I explained that uh, Kapows introduced very interesting lifetime characteristics for um, uh, for various things when they're sent up from the content process. And now that we're not sending up those Kapows, maybe we can uh, we can land this. And I thought we could, but I, I pushed to try yesterday on top of those other patches and I got some test failures and I want to investigate those today. So if we look at the test failures, uh, right here, this is the, here, I'll put a link to this in the agenda as well. Uh, so first of all, let me, let me create a new a Evernote note for this. Uh, I'm pretty sure I don't have an Evernote note for it. So set that and copy the URL and put it here and then make sure that there is a link to the note in the agenda and hold up I actually want this as the link text and that is the link value There you go, and then here is the try push. Try push with failures. So that's what we're looking at today. If you just refresh the agenda, if it doesn't already have those values, if you're watching this live, refresh the agenda because then you'll see the changes I just put in. Okay, so we got some test failures here. Let me pump up the font, we can read these together. Browser autoplay door hanger is timing out. Browser content search is timing out. Browser content search. Browser autoplay door hanger. So we've got a, we've got a pattern here. It's failing across different uh, OSs in our. Uh, so I'm going to start a checklist here. Um, you know, or it, it actually, it failed, sorry, and not different OSs, uh, but different build types. So we did, opt builds are the, the sort of the release builds that we do and debug builds are, are slower, more instrumented builds that catch more things tend to be crashier on purpose. So those two are failing. Over here, yeah, autoplay door hangers. Uh, this looks like it might be an intermittent, there, there's already been an intermittent filed for it, so I'm gonna ignore that one for now unless I see it again. Content search again, autoplay door hanger. This looks like another intermittent. Autoplay door hanger, content search. That looks like an intermittent. intermittent. That looks like an intermittent as well. Autoplay door hanger and content search. Intermittent, probably. What do I mean by intermittent? I mean that tests that uh, sometimes fail um, for reasons that we don't fully understand due to races, usually non-determinism. So I think these are the only ones I really need to worry about. So that's my goal today. I'm going to try and figure out why these two tests are timing out because I think that's what they're doing they're both timing out right timing out and timing out why are these tests timing out 
That's the question. Well, the first step is to see if we can reproduce locally. So I've got uh, I've got the the, te the the patches all applied here on my local version of the tree, my local instance of the tree. So I'm going to run the tests. I'm going to try and run autoplay door hanger. And see what happens. Pardon the sniffles. I'm just hopefully this cold will be fully gone soon. I think like. I'm recovered from where I used to be. I took a couple days off and I was sick on the weekend, but. Okay, so that this feels like timing out. And here's a, an exception that might be related to it. May or may not, unsure. Okay, so that was one. We can reproduce that one. And then the other one is content search. Okay, great. So it looks like we can reproduce both. We're, we're just sitting here for both. Uh, so let's let's look at the first one. The fact that we can re reproduce both is a great sign, though. That makes me feel a lot better. Uh, the worst is whenever you can only reproduce them in automation. So the first step I always find is the best step when uh, attacking a problem like this is to just read the test. What is it doing? And thankfully, this test looks like it's pretty short. And thankfully, there is a description of what it's supposed to be testing at the top. Test that autoplay door hanger is hidden when the user clicks back to new tab. Okay, so uh, we have a URL here to some autoplay, a, a, a URL that's going to do some media autoplay, but we're going to block it. We make sure that we're prompting for autoplay. We open up about home, and then we load the autoplay page. We wait till it's loaded and shown. And then we wait for it to hide by going back. All right. So I guess the first thing I want to know is where are we where are we stuck? So let's run this test again and see if we can get a sense of where we're stuck. So we go forward and then we go back. So it's after we've gone back that we appear to be stuck. Door hanger is hidden. So we start with door hanger is hidden, door hanger is shown, and then we do this stuff. And then we must be awaiting one of these, and we're not sure, it's not clear which one we're awaiting. So we'll say awaiting back promise, and we'll say dump awaiting hidden promise. Okay, so let's uh, let's rerun that test and see what it says. Whew. Awaiting the back promise. So hitting back, we're waiting until the browser says it has stopped. And that's where we're falling over. And how does browser stopped work? Waits for the web progress listener associated with this tab to fire a state stop for the top level document. Oh, then we add a progress listener. So that's interesting. Um, when we go back, go back in history, are we supposed to see a state stop? I think we are. 
Um, and we're doing a process flip because we're switching between the privileged con activity stream content process and uh, like the original page process. So we're flipping back to the privileged process. And somehow the browser stopped um, messages and being sent. So let's, let's see if we can instrument this a little bit. Um, we're waiting for on state change. Don't saw content state change. And then dump clicking back button. Whew, I should have gotten myself something to drink, maybe a tea or something for my throat. I worry about um, losing my voice again so soon. All right. So then we go back. Enter. So door hanger is shown. Clicking back button. We saw a content state change and saw another content state change. What are those content state changes? Are, do we see a stop? That's what I want to know on state change. State flags. JSON with state flags. Whoops, shut that down. Ugh. I accidentally quit my editor because I had the wrong thing focused. Let's bring Sublime back. Okay, so we're going to say if Just going to copy the logic that checks to see whether or not it's a stop. Saw a stop. This is great. So we want to see that message after we hit uh, after we hit the back button. That means the stops coming up. It's just that we're not alerting the right message uh, or the the right progress listener. Maybe we're not rewiring the progress listeners properly. Okay, so after clicking the back button, saw content stayed. Yeah, so we see it, it's right here. Saw stop, this is great, which is what we want. So the right stuff's coming up, that's good. The problem is that our, uh, our web progress listener, isn't being rewired after the process flip. Hmm. Well, let's see how, if I can remember how this process flip step works. Uh, update browser remoteness right here. And then we say whether what the remote type should be. Create new tab progress for new browser. Just inject this tab process of logic handling the initial 
restore the progress listener. Browser dot add progress listener. Whoops. Whoops. Let me bring up the bottom of the editor so you can see what I'm typing. It's going to add progress listeners to web progress. Then when we Listener, tab listeners, and then tab filters. Hmm. Add manager, add progress listener. thing. Uh, well, one thing we could do instead of saying browser stopped hmm, hold on a second. Our state stopped the web browser, web progress, the tabs progress listener. So maybe we should say, I mean, one thing we could do is say like tab equals browser, owner global, G browser, get tab for browser, browser, and say, Tab and progress listener. Explodes. Tab add progress listener is not a function. Well, what were we talking about before? Tab listeners. Add it to not a tab but the G browser. Oh, that's less good. 
So I feel like the best solution is actually the, instead of this, this seems like a workaround. Progress listeners need to sort of get transferred if possible. Add progress listener. That's going to use that with the web progress. And this web progress. might be something deeper. Progress listener. when we swap doc shells do we swap progress listeners swap doc shells Destruction, destruction, swap browsers. Status filter. Just trying to understand here what we should do. What should we do?
I mean, one thing we could do... What is this? <coughs> Excuse me. Why do we need this set, I wonder? I guess we have to somehow keep them alive. Is web progress listener a week? It doesn't own. Oh, weak reference. It's weekly held. Okay. It's a weekly held thing. So one thing we could do, let's just try a thing, is we could say let cheap browser equal browser dollar equal cheap browser tab for browser browser. Um, Let's do that actually up here. Tab, tab remoteness change. Run tab remoteness change. If now how does this thing fire? Tab remoteness change is fired on the tab after the remoteness has flipped. So what we'll do is event.target.linked browser. Say new browser dot add progress listener WPL. No, no, feels pretty wacky um, and then we'll remove the event listener at this point that uh, feels a little hacky but let's see what happens so what I'm doing now is just detecting the remoteness flip and then rewiring the the testing utility to uh, to update the the listener. Okay, that works. Now, does it actually? I'm curious. Maybe that fixes the other one as well. Are they the same thing? I don't know if there's a browser stopped being used in the other one. Let's find out. No, they are not the same thing. All right. This is timing out because the remoteness change is causing the browser test utils dot browser stopped MSI web progress listener 
to be pointed at the discarded uh, MSI web progress. Right. Causing it to be pointed at the wrong web progress. I think we might want to update how web progress listeners get swapped when flipping remoteness or swapping doc shells, swapping frame loaders or doc shells. I think that is the, the sort of the, the best solution is to have an API on NSI web progress that's like um, swap listeners and then it takes some other target, some other web progress. How would that work? Swap listeners. See, the problem with that is then, because we have another implementation of NSI Web Progress add progress listener. We've got remote progress listener and we've got um, dock loader. Listener array and listener infos, weak refs. Listener, what progress listener, right, okay. What do we do? What do we do? This is tricky because the other implementation, uh, like where is the other, was there one more? Prefetch service, no, it's not the same, uh, not the same interface. Browser status filter, however, does implement it. Because the other implementations of NSI web progress, that's NS Dock Loader and NS Browser Status Filter would then need access to the underlying uh, array of progress listeners. If they were all the same classes of things, then like they could be, you know, the we can access the private members, but because we have three different implementations, remote web progress, doc loader, and browser status filter, we need to expose something on the interface that gives them access to the underlying progress listeners, or we need to expose just an iterator I 
iterator on it. Maybe that'd be enough. Numerator. Simple enumerator. So one thing we could do, we could expose a simple, uh, simple enumerator on NSI Web Progress that exposes the NSI Web Progress listeners. As well as a helper function to do the swapping. well as helper functions to do the swapping. And then how would that work? Even if we had that, what would that mean? Well, we already have this like uh, progress listener here, this filter. Filter. Take the old filter. When we remove the filter, remove the listener. So you just, we'd be swapping the filters. That's what we'd be doing, swapping the filters. And you wouldn't need to um, remove the old one. You just say like, swap the filters. You, you'd have to get a reference to the filter anyways, but you wouldn't have to remove the progress listener, um, the, the filter. And that would take care of adding the progress listener down here. Um, and then in swap doc shells, filter. Maybe you wouldn't need to do this either. That would mean not having to so web progress. Parent process.
Well, let's see. Let's see if we can make that happen. Let's just see. Uh, so we're going to update this interface so that we have a read-only attribute the enumerator. What was it SI simple enumerator? Though I seem to recall there being some mail about arrays. Uh, let me see here. Now it works as a JS iterator. No range wrapper. Oh, that's good. It uses a JS iterator. The iterators now have intrinsic type information, do not require QIing. You can simply do let of. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Thank you. Simple enumerator and dot IDL. listeners and then we'll update this instance get listeners uh, SI worker S later is there a good example of a JS implemented simple enumerator array deep equal oh I see map enumerator JS it right huh so what is this? Supports interface pointer. All right. Do I even need to do this? Constructor. Can I like do all right, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and an array of values. It's an iterator. Can I query interface uh, to a CI 
as I simple enumerator? No, I can't. So that's, so I've got to do this. So like uh, const uh, sports interface pointer, and then we're gonna say return our array pointer dot data equals uh, this dot progress listeners dot values and then return array pointer dot data dot query interface that and that should do it it should give us our our simple enumerator I think Um, and I can maybe test that right now. Well, I might actually have to update this to bring in interface reader. And it's probably going to complain because NS Doc Loader has not implemented this yet. Doc Loader dot CPP. Let's um, Doc Loader. Um, remove progress listener. I'm going to say. I method imp and stock loader get listeners as I simple enumerator a result. And I can say return as okay. Here and then I'll do the same thing for NS browser status filter. I'll say just return null for now. Now it's probably not going to like that I, I just edited those files. Like I don't want to be in a weird state. So I'm going to hit build again. Now, co constructing the simple enumerator in C++, uh, let's see here. Using a sign of business. So supposing I wanted to, oh, in, in the case of browser status filters, there's only one listener. So you return the single 
numerator or the single. Let's find an example of using an SI simple enumerator in C++, returning one. Sure. Payment request service. Or is that in C++ or is that in JavaScript? Good, it's in C++. And enumerate. Construct a new enumerator. Man. Enumerator. So we have to, great, we have to do this. Um, construct it. Okay, so we're gonna need a simple Browser, status, filter, listener, enumerator. That's an awful name. <laughs> um, Web progress listener, M listener. Uh, as copy, SI web progress listener. small what's a small number you really small a short Sign short size. Unsigned shorts, two bytes, that's still too big. Um, the smallest, just like one byte. Char, unsigned char. Unsigned char. Do I even need an index? I guess I need to know where I've been. Uh, unsigned. Uh, 
short and index. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. Say public Let's filter listener and numerator const. SI web progress listener happy listener then do the other declarations Listener, so much boilerplate. Is this even really necessary? And then private destructor. Right, and then implement has more next. pool return m index is zero get next If M index greater than zero, return as error failure. Otherwise, So that should do it, I think. It's a very simple iterator because it will only ever return one element. So now if we do get listeners, payment request service, Using two space here. I don't know why my editor decided to go for four. Oh, 
well, I guess in some places we're doing two, in some places we're doing four. Shoot, browse status filters using four, that's why. Never mind. Sorry, 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 sorry. Undo, what a waste of time. And return m index zero m listener. How that enumerator is supposed to work? Yes, it is. And then I'll say. Sure, our pointer, that sounds like a good idea. NS com pointer this thing. New browser status filter numerator. I say enumerator dot forget a result. I'm gonna pass it M listener. Yes, okay. Whoops. This thing's never heard of null. It's got to be null pointer. Whoo. Here in doc loader, we'll do something similar. I'll just put it here for now. Doc loader, listener, enumerator. Get is the info list. So the info list is a listener array. And then we're going to say construct it with copy an array. How do we copy the array?
M array is what? M array. Array type. I want a copy? That's a good question. If I just hold a reference to the array, maybe that's enough. Listener array. Just have a pointer to The listener array. Index is zero. How big is this array? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh, we actually get an iterator from it. Backward iterator, can we get a simple numerator? No, damn it. Let's find out. Listener array dot length. Get next. M index is greater than failure. Access it. I need a, an iterator. <laughs> iterator. 
later. Forward iterator. So we can do instead of a list the listener array, we'll do forward iterator and iter. Listener array, then we'll say m iter. Listener array return m iter dot has more elements has more. A result equals and then I return and it's okay. Get next. If not, this dot turn as error failure. I'll do get next M editor Can I just read something about do query referent? There's something in here from Nicholas Nethercoat. This is starting to feel not, like, not the greatest solution, to be honest. It just it feels so ham-fisted. <laughs> and thank you, Smurf D, for saying, bless you. Oh. No, I was about to query interface, never mind. Reference. 
This uh, a result no. Next, we have the info, the listener, if listener a result equals this work <clears throat> so if we don't have any more elements we'll fail out if we do have elements we'll get at the weak listener and if it has an actual listener associated with it we'll return it otherwise we'll keep looping yeah this will work I think that'll work get listeners um, something like this I don't know if this is the right call I don't know and then pass in the what is the doc child and listener info list. All right, we'll see how that goes. If that's given us enumerators, great. <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna call it here. I'm not feeling well, I can feel my brain starting to fall apart and we're almost already at time. And this compiles taking forever, probably because I keep I'm <clears throat> messing with the files while I'm compiling, which is never a good sign. Hey, we're going to call it here. Thanks so much for watching episode 151 of The Joy of Coding. Hopefully I didn't get you sick. Uh, I don't think I'm actually still... I think I'm just recovering still. I don't think I'm stick, sick anymore. Um, but concentrating is a little bit hard. Um, hey, uh, uh, let me know what you thought of this episode. There is a rate this episode link here in the agenda. Uh, fill that out and let me know. There's a fun picture of me uh, in like night vision at the very end. So that's a reason to fill out the form. And let me know what you thought. I read everything that comes in. Thank you so much for watching episode 151 of The Joy of Coding. Hopefully I'll feel better next week. Um, and for you, uh, well, and next week, I'm not actually sure I'm just streaming. I actually assume I'm not because I have a feeling I'm going to be stuck in meetings all day. And if that's the case, I will see you the week after next. Uh, and uh, just watch my Twitter and Mastodon feed for on the day to know exactly what's going on. 
And that's it. So take care of yourselves, and I'll hopefully see you in a couple weeks or next week. We'll see. Take care. Bye-bye. Hold on. Hold on. Got to cue up the music. My tablet fell asleep. See ya. The joy of God. Bye.